well. Uh, it's uh, on hardware security primitives, and we have three papers. Uh, the first paper is uh, a cautionary note on the security of some puff constructions, and the other two are random number generator constructions. Uh, the first paper uh, authors are Kai Shin Chong, Robin de Greve, Andrea Fantini, Guido Grossenecken, Dimitri Linton, and Ingrid Ferberovere. And Kai Shin will give the talk. So. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I will begin with my talk. Uh, okay. Here shows today's outline. So I will first uh, introduce uh, what is reconfigurable puff and why we might need a reconfigurable puff. And the second, I will introduce the variability on the RN devices and also why uh, we are considering it's a candidate for reconfigurable puff. And then later on, I will talk about the two implementations that use uh, RM as a puff and the reconfigurability. And then I will show how this uh, reconfigurability of the RM are, is not uh, an ideal case. And then I will conclude this work. So let's begin with a scenario of uh, puff-based key generation. And see here, we have an uh, entropy source on the chip. And being read out by the, some circuits, it will, it will give uh, puff uh, outputs, uh, which is noisy. And in order to uh, use this puff uh, readout as a key, we need all these extra circuits, including helper data and the storage and the error correction to, to make always we get the same key. And now here comes the question. So how sh can we update the key in the case that we don't want to throw away the device and get a new one? And in this case, uh, it's already used is uh, re-enrollment. So we can apply a re-enrollment uh, re phase again, and then it will give a new helper data, and then we can derive a new key. But why we still need a reconfigurable path, and then we just need to consider another scenario. In some cases, uh, the path uh, entropy source is n stable, so there's would introduce no errors. So for all the cycles, if you if you keep re-enrolling it, you will only just derive the, always the same key. So in this case, the re-enrollment doesn't work if we want to update the key. So it's not the only problems. The the re-enrollment in the previous case it relies on unstable cells, which is not always consistent because the each path has different number of unstable cells, and each uh, unstable cell have different instability as well. So now the so now it comes at why we need a reconfigurable path. It's, uh, then we are going to look why we consider RM is as a reconfigurable source. So I will introduce how it's operated. So here shows an example of an oxygen resistance based RM. It's based on hafnium oxide. And as a normal resistor, it has two terminals. And in between, there's a hafnium layer and a hafnium oxide layer, which uh, is a dielectric. And uh, yeah, the RM typically uh, is connected to an access transistor, which allows to us to program and to read a specific RM. And I will show how it's operated. So we begin with the fresh RM, which have only a dielectric. And it's, it's at a really high resistance. It's not conducting any current. But now we apply a forming stress. This forming stress will increase, will, will introduce some filament in the increase, will introduce a filament in this uh, dielectric. And it will start to conducting current with a lower resistance. And how we operate it is we first apply a negative voltage, which we call the reset voltage, on this RM. And it will push back these conducting vacancies back to the top and the bottom electrode. And it shrinks the filament. And then the resistance becomes higher. Then it's a higher resistance state. And how to go back? We again, similar to apply a, high, a positive voltage, which is called the set voltage. And it would. Give, well, it would uh, increase the filament again, and it comes the low resistance state. And the data can be stored in these two states in these RN devices. So as I illustrate here, the, it's related to the particle movement within this filament. So this particle movement is unpredictable. So there's different shape and different number for each set and reset cycles. So it's 
uh, gives different resistance for each cycles, then that can be potentially used as a reconfigurable path. And how is it really operated? Here shows an example uh, of the RM without reconfigurability. So as normal paths, it have different types of variations. And what we care more is the, 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 the variation within the chip and also the variation between the chips. And also what we don't like, but it exists, is the uh, variation between the readout cycles. And as shown in some literatures, for the conventional paths, uh, RM paths, these are not in issues for these properties. So now we are focusing on how is it is reconfigured. So as we discussed before, each program in cycles, it gives different resistance. So we can keep reprogramming the, the RM, so it would keep giving different resistance. And then it can potentially give more uh, different path uh, outputs for, for each configuration. So that's how our focusing. We are going to look at these configuration to configuration variations and to see if we can use the, the RM as a true reconfigurable path. So here it's not so it's illustrate how, how it's different. So for example, these, uh, these cycles, the RM have this, part, this number of particles, but maybe in certain cycles later it would have more particles within the filament, so now it becomes a lower resistance. So there are randomness in between these two states. So what we care is, can we, uh, is this uh, difference enough for, use for, for reconfigurations? Okay. And uh, as you see, because of these resistance are not predictable, so we are can also not, uh, we can only get the statistics and we do some modeling and then we use this results to analyze the, the randomness. So this is a background of, our, uh, of this work. So now let me begin with uh, uh, introduction, in introducing uh, two implementations on RM paths. That's already proposed in some literatures. And here comes the first one. So as shown on this figure, uh, the, the x-axis is the resistance, and the y-axis is the, the accumulated distribution function. It shows how, how the resistance are distributed for, for the RM devices. So there shows that the gray curve is five devices. And uh, the, the red, curve, red, dot red points are the average of these five devices. And the, 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 the curves at the right side is the higher resin state. And the curves at the left side are the low resin states of curves. And how it happens is that if we set an RN with a high, higher resin state, it will move to a resistance which falls into the distribution at the left side. And if we do a reset, the, the, the resistance will fall in the, any dis, a point at the right uh, distribution. And how it can be used as a path, here shows an example. So we def derive, define a threshold on a certain distribution. And if the resistance is lower than this value, it defined it as a 1. And if it's higher than this value, we defined it as a 0. So for different RMs, we can get maybe different path bits. And how to reconfigure it is we put it back to the low resistance state and then reset it again. So this time it can fall in a different value, so it can give different results from cycle to cycle. Okay? And this is ideal case. And how it's happening in the reality is the HRMs are actually unique, so they don't have the same distribution as shown here. The, the one device have the lowest, resist, lowest resistance in average, and the other device have the highest resistance in average. And what the cause of this is if we again define a threshold, and to, to determine one and zero, you can see the, for the device one, there's more uh, points at the left side and less at the right, and vice versa for the, 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 the device, the last device. So in this case, there's a device dependent bias for, for, from cycle to cycle. So we don't have a perfect uh, reconfigurability in this case. Okay. And how's the cause of this? So we have the model, then we, we simplify it into one parameter, which is called the minimum number of vacancies in this filament. And so it means this, no, no matter how you reset the, this RM, the, the, this number, you cannot go below this number within these vacancies. And using this number, we can not precisely, but kind of pre reproduce the, the, the distribution we see from the left side. And we can find how uh, the, this number is distributed also in for, for all the RN devices. 
Another point is that because you see that the, that the black curve at the right at this, this plot, it represents every device that we measured. And actually, you see that distribution from device to device, from RM to RM, is actually much narrower than the, the distribution from the configuration to configuration. So it's usually overlooked in many literatures, so, but in here we know it's, we cannot neglect it. So since we see this, uh, this example, we, we show another uh, implementation. So these are different implementations, but it's can, so, so now we start not from the low resistance state, we start from the high resistance state. And for each time, each uh, experiment, we apply a different uh, set voltage from low to high. And you can see for the lowest lower uh, set voltage, we have less probability to set this RN to a low resistance state. And for the higher voltage, it has higher chance to be set to the low resistance state. So it have different switching probability. And how this can work as a path is we define a voltage, we call a half set voltage, which uh, roughly give me, if we ask uh, the 50% of switching. So for these two different RNs, they are being applied with the same set voltage, but one of them might be switched to, to a lower resistance state, but the other can stay. And how to reconfigure it is also similar. So we make it again back to the high resistance state and then apply the same uh, set pause again. So it's also have the chance to, have to stay the same or become a different value. And again, this also have problem because uh, we already say there's different n set values for different RMs. And you see in these simulations, they're also for different n set values, even if we apply the same, uh, apply the same uh, V set, half set voltage, then it can still have much different probability to switch to low resistance states or not. So it's caused uh, the problem, also the bias here. And how it is happening is because for the, if you see the right curve, it's determined, it's, it shows how f what the time we need to set uh, an RN to a low resistance state. And for, and for here, you can see for a lower end set, we need more time to set it. So it's caused uh, this problem. And then, yeah, I'm going to introduce uh, how, how, we, how this affects uh, the reconfigurability. So, as usual, as normal path, so we are talking about the uniqueness between these configurations. And for the, the normal path, we, we, we check the interchip Hamming distance as an index. And as well here, we check the interconfiguration Hamming distance as the index. So the target would be this interconfiguration Hamming distance is as good as the, the interchip Hamming distance. Then it implies that we, don't, we have the same security as uh, replacing a new chip. But yes, as we said, it's, uh, there are some problems with the reconfigurability. So it shows the, uh, the, the, the simulation using these this methods. So we split the, the resistance. But you see here, for the Hamming distance distribution we simulate, it's, it's shifted lower, it's not centered at 0 0.5. So it indicates that the, the, the reconfigurability is not ideal. And not only this example, we also test all the implementation that discussed in the paper, but I cannot cover all of them in, in its talk. But you see here for all these implementations, they all show clear a uni uniqueness degradation between their configurations. So, and also you see the level of degradations also varies for different uh, path implementation, even if they are in the same technology. So the way, how, uh, the way you uh, implemented it also affecting the reconfigurability. And now this brings us to the conclusion. So there are simple conclusions that uh, the, so the true reconfigurability is not achievable using these RM paths. And the other thing is that uh, if we really want to use a reconfigurable RM path, then we cannot uh, neglect the impact on the uniqueness of this uh, variation that we found in, in our work. So thank you very much for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. So questions? Oh, there's one question there. Uh, hello. Um, 
For th just a question. For the first implementation case where you're choosing a threshold for the resistance when you're setting it to the high resistance state, yes. would it be possible to bypass that by doing, say, pairwise comparison, having two um, RM elements next to each other and seeing which one is, say, higher than the other or lower than the other to bypass this um, needing to find a distinct threshold every time you produce a new device, for instance? Yes, that's a good question. So we also have discussed one implementation using the same similar scenarios in, in our work, so, but it's not, in, not described here. Yes, that's possible, and also some people did it in their work, but as we uh, uh, experiment in our work, we will show that it's also not a good idea in, in the sense of reconfigurability using that method to compare two different RMs. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you. More questions? No? I have one question. So if you go to uh, seven, slide seven. Slide seven. Yeah. So you, you are trying to attack the reconfigurability of the puff. I'm wondering if you would be able to optically attack the puff. So the, I think it might be the previous slide, Optical. you showed ah. the filament size. Or maybe it's the next one, I don't know. Yes. Yeah, that one. Uh, and so does that filament uh, depend uh, on the resistance, right? And yes. if, if you do that, then could you just take pictures and uh, check what the resistance is or correlate it and then just optically, without anything yeah. else, uh, get, the, get the values. OK, this is an interesting question. But I think for, for this case, because the filaments would exist anyway, even for the, the low resistance state and the high resistance state, mm -hmm. and it's only the, for what in the, real, in the model that we have is that this value is actually more affected by the constriction in the filament. So it's only a small part of the, the filament within, inside, the RN, inside these stacks, which affects the the resistance. the resistance. So I think if you really observe it, even if you can see the filament, I don't think you can see the difference between the high and low resistance. OK. All right. Yeah. All right. Any additional questions? OK. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.